This video is brought to you by NordVPN. France and Germany have always had a rocky relationship. The two European superpowers disagree on just about everything, but for most of European history, they've been able to iron out their differences and keep Europe ticking along, hence the engine of Europe. However, in the last couple of months, Franco-German relations have become increasingly tense, as the EU struggles to deal with a chaotic geopolitical landscape and domestic issues limit both sides' ability to compromise. So in this video, we're going to look at the Franco-German relationship, why it's currently under strain, and whether it's just another hump in the road or something we should actually be worried about. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. So the first thing to say is that the French and Germans have always had their points of disagreement. In recent times, three things have stood out. Energy, debt and Macron's notion of strategic autonomy. On energy, both France and Germany agree on the need to decarbonise the European economy, but they disagree on how to do it. The French, for example, are very keen on nuclear power. On average, more than 70% of France's electricity comes from its 56 nuclear power plants. The Germans, on the other hand, began phasing out Germany's fleet of nuclear power plants in 2011, after the Fukushima disaster, and this was consensus across the German political spectrum. At the time, only the AFD wanted to keep the nuclear power plants online, and polling suggested that about three quarters of Germans supported the phase-out. The French and Germans also disagree on natural gas, which the Germans support as a transition fuel. For example, France opposes the Midcat pipeline, which would have connected Central Europe to the gas pipeline network running up from Algeria in northern Africa into Spain. Scholz was in favour of the pipeline, but Macron argued that investing in gas infrastructure would only slow down the energy transition. The second point of disagreement is debt. Broadly, the Germans are more fiscally conservative than the French, which means that they generally favour stricter limits on debt for EU member states and are less keen on debt sharing between EU member states. The two sides found agreement in the pandemic when they signed off on the EU's 750 billion euro Covid recovery fund, but disagreements flared up again last year after the Germans passed an enormous energy support package which basically allowed the Germans to buy loads of natural gas at the expense of other EU states. The third point of disagreement is strategic autonomy. Basically, France, and especially Macron, have always pushed for the EU to reduce its dependence on the US and to become a more active geopolitical player, while the Germans are generally less worried about geopolitics and more focused on trade and commercial relations. Here, France is especially annoyed at Germany's recent decision to buy American weapon systems instead of investing in Europe's domestic military capacity as part of its so-called Zeitenwende. However, while Germany and France have never seen eye to eye, in the last few months relations have really deteriorated. You can see it if you look at a calendar. Last week, Baerbock visited Macron in France, and the two sides have at least one bilateral a month planned for the next few months, including a state visit to Germany by Macron, the first since 2000. Now, at first glance, a lot of meetings might seem like a symptom of good relations, but in fact, the reverse is true. When France and Germany are holding a lot of meetings, it's because there's a lot to sort out. And if we're being cynical, it's also because it's easy to fall back to the pomp and symbolism of state visits when you can't find agreement on substance. The extent of disagreement was made clear last week in Schultz's speech to the EU Parliament. Schultz insisted that the US remains the EU's most important ally, and that the EU should focus on commercial relations, not geopolitics, by continuing to sign free trade deals, a clear rebuttal to Macron's vision for the EU, and warned that anyone who nostalgically clings to a dream of European dominance, who serves up fantasies of their nation being a major power, is stuck in the past. So why have Franco-German relations deteriorated to the point that Schultz is airing his grievances in public? Well, as we see it, there are two reasons. First, the EU is in a state of crisis, which means there's less space for fudging disagreements or so-called strategic ambiguity. 
Previously, if the two countries couldn't agree on something, they could just kick the can down the road. However, because the EU is facing a series of related crises, a war in Ukraine, an energy crisis, and a new cold war between the US and China, this isn't really an option anymore. The EU has to make decisions right here, right now. The EU has to decide what attitudes to take towards China, how it wants to continue EU military spending, and whether nuclear power counts as a renewable energy source. This new era of crisis has made all these decisions more pressing, which means Germany and France have to actually iron out their differences now instead of just muddling through. The second reason is domestic politics. In France, Macron is coming to the end of his term, and he knows that whoever succeeds him won't have the same political weight in Europe, and, judging by Macron's current approval ratings, probably won't share his politics. This means it's make or break for strategic autonomy, which is why Macron is promoting it so aggressively. Unsurprisingly, this is creating some tension with the Germans, who don't necessarily share Macron's view on, say, Europe's relationship with the US, and don't appreciate his headline-grabbing comments on the issue. In Germany, basically every member of the ruling coalition is falling in the polls. Scholz's SPD are now 10 points behind Frederick Merz's CDU, the Greens are now 8 points down from their August high of 23%, and the FDP, which won 11.5% of the vote at the last election, is polling on just 8%. In reaction, the coalition members have started trying to shore up support amongst their base by sticking rigidly to their hallmark policies. The Greens, for example, have forced the shutdown of Germany's three remaining nuclear power plants, despite the fact that this means burning more coal to make up for the shortfall, and argued that it shouldn't be eligible for the EU's green subsidies. The FDP, meanwhile, have dug their heels in on EU debt reform. Christian Lindner, the FDP's leader and Germany's current finance minister, penned a piece in the Financial Times last month pushing back against debt-sharing proposals and arguing that the EU's current fiscal rules actually need to be strengthened instead. Lindner actually personally lobbied against the EU's new vehicle emissions plan on behalf of German car companies and forced a last-minute exemption for e-fuels, which irritated the French, both because they'd already agreed to the previous regulations and because they're generally less worried about protecting industry than the Germans. So you get the idea. Domestic issues and the EU's poly crisis have exacerbated pre-existing fault lines in the Franco-German relationship. This isn't entirely new. France and Germany have fallen out before, but it's an open question as to whether they'll be able to reconcile in the EU's new era of crisis. A few weeks ago, we were invited to Downing Street, where we were briefed on the government's anti-fraud plan. As part of this, we found out that more younger people have fallen victim to online scams than over 35s. And, as our analytics frequently tell us, our audience skews younger, which means that you're likely in this age bracket. So, if you want to protect yourself online, you should try NordVPN. NordVPN has a bunch of tools that keep you safe. First, they have a feature called Threat Protection, which protects you from malware, trackers, malicious ads, and phishing scams. But that's not all. NordVPN also has dark web monitoring services, which, even if you somehow do fall victim to online fraud or scams, notifies you if your details end up online, so you can promptly change your passwords and keep yourself protected. And what's more, if technology isn't really your thing, don't worry, NordVPN offers 24-7 customer support and even a 30-day money-back guarantee for all users. So check out our link in the description to get your discount on their two-year plan, plus four extra months on top of that. Thanks for your support.